Thank you for staying with me on our series on ARDL modeling. Today we are looking at estimating ARDL and error correction models in Stata. As a follow up to the previous tutorials, this is the generalized model that we have been looking at. And in that model, I am taking each of the variables as a dependent variable. Because I told you that Y is also a vector, and a vector by the simplest explanation is that each of the variable can also be used as a dependent variable in a regression. So based on that understanding, we conducted three bounce tests for cointegration, where the log of manufacturing output, the log of imports, and the real exchange rate are each individually used as a dependent variable, and the bounce test for cointegration was conducted. If you need the data set for this tutorial, please click on the link attached to the video description and if you need the do file, you can send me your email through the comment section of this video. On the table is the outcome of the bounce test for cointegration when each of the variables was used as a dependent variable. And the outcome indicates that only the log of INP showed evidence of cointegration among the variables. I also showed you that if there is no cointegration, this is how you express the equation mathematically. So this is what you state if there is no cointegration in that equation. So if there is cointegration, you have to specify an error correction model in this way. And the error correction model comprises both the short run, which are those equations having the change operators, and the ECT component. The ECT again captures the long run representation in the model. And below, you can see all the characteristics of the error correction model. I already explained them here. So now let us go to Stata, where I show you how to estimate both the ARDL model and the error correction model. I have my do file and I have my log files ready. As a Stata user, be familiar with how to use both the do files and the log files. By typing browse in the command section, these are the variables again we have been using in this um, ARDL tutorial. You have the log of MVA, real exchange rates, and the log of IMP. And from the outcome of the bounce test, the log of MVA and the real exchange rate evidences no cointegration among the variables. So only the log of IMP showed cointegration. Therefore, we are only going to estimate the ARDL models for the log of MVA and the real exchange rate while we estimate an error correction model for the log of IMP. I have set up the commands. To start off, I have to run this command T set here. This is to prepare Stata to run time series analysis. This is the outcome of the command time variable from 1981 to 2014, meaning I have a total of 34 years observations. So the first thing to do, I'm going to run the ARDL, which is a short-run model for the log of manufacturing outputs, which showed no cointegration. And this is the stata code, or the stata command. You can see it's highlighted. Afterwards, I will just simply look at some diagnostics of the model. I'll look at the serial correlation, heteroscedasticity, and also model stability. I'm highlighting everything, and I'm clicking on. Here is the outcome of the result. You can see up here, that is the stata code. And here you can see ARDL regression model level. So this is a short run ARDL outcome. The lag structure you can see here, 100, is obtained from the VASOC outputs using the AIC information criterion. So looking at this result, how will you interpret it? You will simply say, a percentage change in the first lag of manufacturing outputs is associated with a 0.75% increase in manufacturing outputs on average Ceteris Paribus at the 1% statistical significance level. That is the way you interpret that. Now let's check out some diagnostics. For serial correlation, using the W. Watson statistic at 1.8, there is no evidence of serial correlation, which is supported by the outcome of the Bruce Godfrey test of 0.595. So no serial correlation in this model. However, the model is suffering from heteroscedasticity from what we can see from the white test. 
So let us look out for those model stability. Here is a Cousin graph. It lies between the 5% boundary, so the model is stable. So the next we have to conduct is for the real exchange rate. I've highlighted wrong. Here is the output for the real exchange rate. In that regression, for bounce test for cointegration, there's no cointegration. So all you have to do is the simple ARDL regression. You can see it here and interpret your results using the Ceteris variables argument. Here we can see that only the first and the second lag of real exchange rates have significant influence on real exchange rates. The log of manufacturing outputs and the log of imports are not significant. So this is how your interpretation will be like. A percentage point change in the first lag of real exchange rate is associated with a 1.15 percentage point increase in the real exchange rate. On average, Ceteris Paribus are the 1% statistical significance level. Second lag of the real exchange rate, you can say a percentage point change in the second lag of the real exchange rate is associated with a 0.49 percentage point decline in the real exchange rate. On average, Ceteris Paribus are the 1% statistical significance level. This is the simplest way you can interpret, given the fact that these are OLS estimates and it's just a simple Ceteris Paribus interpretation. So let's check out the diagnostics. For the serial correlation at 1.87 from W. Watson, this, is, uh, this shows no evidence of serial correlation supported by the outcome of the Bruce Godfrey test. But we cannot say the same for heteroscedasticity. In this model, there is heteroscedasticity. So let us check for model stability. It lies within the 5% bound. So this is good. So lastly, we have to estimate the error correction model with the log of import as a dependent variable. Remember, when we did the bounce test for cointegration, there was cointegration among the variables. You can see here the code. And the option EC is the error correction representation. So this is how you construct the error correction model in stata. I highlight everything and as usual I click the run button. So on the screen is the output for the error correction model with log of imports as a dependent variable. Here you can see the stata code and here you can see the model is EC. EC simply means error correction. The, the way the output turned out is also different from what we had before. In this case we have the adjustment column you have the long run and we have the short run. The adjustment there shows that the errors of the previous period will be corrected in the current period. The coefficient is statistically significant at the 1% level and is also negative. So minus 0 0.537 is the adjustment term and it's highly statistically significant. How will you interpret the relationship between manufacturing outputs and imports? In this example, you simply say a percentage change in manufacturing output is associated with a 0.572% decline in imports. So that is the way you interpret that. On average, Ceteris Paribus at the 5% level. It's a Ceteris Paribus argument because these are simply OLS estimates. Let's take a look at um, the diagnostics. From the W. Watson statistic 2.10, there is no serial correlation supported by the outcome of the Bush Godfrey test. We are also happy to see that there is no heteroscedasticity from the outcome of the Y test. So let's look out for the model stability. So here's a custom test. We can see the model is stable. This is good to know. So I will conclude by saying that uh, the outcome of the bounce test will tell you whether to specify a vector error correction model, an error correction model, or an ARDL model. You will only specify a VECM only if there is co-integration from the three equations, for instance, in this my example. You will also obtain short-run dynamic parameters when you estimate an error correction model or VECM associated with the long-run estimates. You can obtain short-run causal effects and this is represented by the t-statistic on the explanatory variables for short-run coefficients. For the long-run relationship, 
It is the t statistic of the coefficient of the lagged error correction term that tells you whether there is grandeur causality. So if the t statistic is significant, it's an indication that there is grandeur causality among the variables. And just like I said, the interpretation of the short-run coefficients are simply Ceteris Paribus effects because these are OLS estimates. Again, if you need the data, click on the link. And if you need the do file, send me your email address using the comments section. Thank you for stopping by. Hope to see you on our subsequent series.